I cracked it. Hey, how's it going? Um, so I'm going to talk a little about something that is made of open hardware, but is made for a specific statement that goes a little bit beyond the hardware and software that defines it. Uh, every, so this is like the obligatory bio slide that everybody does. Um, I'm just going to roll through this real quick. I'm mostly a JavaScript developer, not necessarily that much in the hardware. Uh, I'm really interested in things like JavaScript encryption, which has a lot of haters, but I think has come a long way since then. Uh, I'm also the co-organizer of something called Art Hack Day, a hackathon for artists whose medium is technology and technology is the medium is art, which is at where this project is kind of a nice intersection between the two. Uh, this isn't the first time I've trolled data retention. Uh, Basically, that I'm also I, I did a thing called Haystack, which is dot, like host.ac, because I had to take off the K at the end because other domains weren't available. Um, that basically obfuscates or did Google search history to add a bunch of fake results and then fake clicks of fake clicks of those search results into the mix. So it just turns your your history into a big mess. Uh, I also help run crypto parties in New York City, which I'll uh, touch up on in a little bit. Uh, so that's something that's going on. Uh, also, I live in New York City. This is the thing that I was talking about. So this is an art project that I did, uh, Begin PGP Mixtape, sort of a play on Begin PGP Message, which is sort of the, uh, the first line, opening line of an encrypted email message with PGP. Uh, this, so th this is actually really boring hardware. It's an Arduino and a Wave Shield. I guess it's not boring. It's just that like, you've all seen it before. Uh, so it's, it's really great. It's, I love it. But the, um, so it's just basically that with an SD card, uh, two plates of acrylic, which is sort of like the standard hackerspace aesthetic of like this Arduino panini of just like sandwiching these two things together. Um, that has a few like th sort of design decisions that I put into it. In this case, the, uh, it's a transparent sort of design and kind of open on the sides. The reason being, it was sort of a statement on wanting openness and like the devices that we depend on. Uh, in this case, like also a protest to the exploitation of these more black box devices by companies like Finn Fisher, uh, Hacking Team, et cetera, which basically weaponize software for governments to use to spy on their citizens. Uh, so it was just basically me being like, no. So that's basically what that looks like. Uh, it's in a box, because in this case, I was able to find this like, weird mailing address that the NSA has at the Fort Meade headquarters. And I mailed it to them. So I said, I'm going to create a surveillance sort of mixtape, uh, and then have it play on the Arduino Wave Shield, but then encrypt the SD card so that you can't actually listen to it without the header key passphrase. Uh, so this is something that I think more people should ask uh, about kind of the, our efforts, the things that we put our time and energy into. Uh, in this case, it's because of what's being built in Utah. It's because of what's being done elsewhere, like also in, like with Australia's data retention and other places as well, is we're, we live under a lot of surveillance that I tend to disagree with as far as like how it works, et cetera. Um, this is my way of basically saying that even though we we have these apparatuses, like we have encryption and other technologies that can assist in helping us sort of uh, tr attempt to bring back our privacy. Uh, this is a little more complicated than it sounds because crypto software is hard. Uh, it's, it's something that was developed in the 90s by a lot of very smart people, but that was made by very smart people for very smart people. Um, not to say that the rest of us aren't smart in other ways, but in this case, most of us uh, are not sort of crypto smart. Um, I'm not. So in this case, we also have crypto parties, which are sort of like Tupperware parties for cypherpunks, which is basically a way for us to kind of all meet together and then kind of go through the hurdles of like getting the stuff working, understanding how it works, and sort of building a community around that as well. This actually happened, this is our first event at the Brooklyn Public Library, um, which we've partnered with. Uh, it's one of those things that we keep hearing about libraries kind of stepping into a lot of crossover of the sort of stuff that we've been doing, and this is like another avenue that that's been happening, which I'm really excited about. Uh, so, I mean, cryptography is powerful in the sense that this is something that the military's had for a long time. The US military specifically, um, this is the thing that like in World War II was basically like, oh, hey, Navajo is hard, let's use that. Um, to being a lot more advanced and using much more uh, sort of sophisticated mathematical algorithms to obfuscate data and sort of protect it. Uh, this became, this was totally something that 
was exclusive to that domain up until like the early 90s, which of course we know, like Phil Zimmerman, et cetera, released code to be, for us to be able to use it for the rest of the world. Um, that was basically an act of like a declaration of sovereignty in some ways. Uh, whereas in this case, with teaching crypto, it's more of an act of solidarity. So let's talk about the crypto behind this mixtape. Is uh, so here's the thing that I haven't actually talked about yet is like what I use to actually encrypt it. Um, this was in March, May, May, and uh, I, I it made it a true crypt volume. Like it was easier to like be able to set up a hashing algorithm that was different than the standard ones that it came with. So I used Whirlpool because it wasn't influenced by NIST. Uh, Ten days after I mailed the mixtape, this like all this like weirdness happens be behind the project. Um, so nobody really knows what's going on. Like the software itself says it's insecure not to use it. Uh, in this case, I've uh, looked into some other alternatives. Something that I think would be of more use to the open hardware and open software community, which I'd like to share with you now. There's a lot of stuff out there. Um, eCryptFS and NCFS are two very promising systems of sort of file system encryption, so just encrypting files, encrypting volumes, uh, that run quite well actually on things like the Raspberry Pi, the Beagle Black. Uh, there's a little bit more support on NCFS on different file systems because they use something called Fuse, which is basically an abstraction of a file system so that you can theoretically create software to run on Windows OS X, and I think those platforms should be included because not everybody's going to install Linux. Uh, so, I uh, don't actually have the speakers loud enough to actually connect this to the thing. But, so this is actually the, um, the decrypted version. This is actually, uh, so I work at a museum, we had a staff art show, and we were able to like, showcase different things that we worked on. Uh, I made two of them, so the red one was red because red in, like kind of the parlance of that was like, this is the ciphertext, this is like the secret sensitive stuff. And clear is just like what's in the clear. Uh, this is that one. So this has just an unencrypted SD card with the actual soundtrack. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the design was that this is a purple LED. Um, those are hard to source. So at least it, I had difficulty with them anyway. I don't have friends in Shenzhen. But uh, yeah, I mean, but there was a very specific color choice, mostly because like I think in addition to sort of these technological solutions that we try to like use as sort of aids to solving problems where like political solutions don't necessarily pan out. We also need to think about the greater context of the political jurisdictions that we live in, and in this case, purple happened to be like pirate party color out of like the, the sort of like distinct sort of internet freedom groups out there. I figured that would be kind of a nice hat tip to them for like thinking about it. Uh, so that was an, sort of a little add-on that, uh, that would have there. But in any case, this is basically the project, and if any of you have questions, uh, I'll be around afterwards for that. Thanks.